So now we are finally getting into phase four of the DCEU project. The first film being Captain Comet. He is a bit of a strange one. Captain Comet was made in a time in between the Golden Age of Comics and the Silver Age of Comics in 1951. It was mainly through this that he never really took off as a character, as well as the fact that he was kind of a human ripoff of Superman. But I still really like the idea of Captain Comet and bringing him into the mainstream. Due to the fact that no one knows who he is, this would be an origin story for him, with maybe a couple tweaks. Nothing major to take away from the character, though. The names of his parents would change, as they are the same as Superman's, and the setting from where he was born would change. This time they would be called Jerry and Melanie Blake, and they would live in a Levittown-like suburb to really hone in that 1950s feel, as well as another reason I'll get into later. So, the origin for Captain Comet goes like this. When Adam Blake was born, a comet passed overhead and activated his metagene, becoming a man a thousand years ahead of his time. He grows up way ahead of everyone else, becoming more physically and even mentally inclined than other kids. He has even more powers than Superman, not just super strength and invulnerability, but telepathy, photographic memory, clairvoyance, postcognition, invisibility, teleportation, and many others. It's because of this he feels more isolated, and this is why I wanted it to take place in a suburb, is because everything and everybody looked the same. Everyone in that time pretty much acted the same too, and conformed to the same ideas, the same looks, down to a science almost. Then you have this giant sore thumb in Adam Blake. He doesn't belong in this time, and the best way to show that visually is a man that should have been born in 2951 being stuck in a 1951 suburb. So he goes through school putting on a big smile so nobody suggests anything different from him. He eventually graduates and becomes a librarian. Here he meets Emery Zakro. They become friends and through him he truly learns what he is. With that, Zakro accepts him for who he is and he eventually becomes a hero as Captain Comet, where he has to fight aliens from another planet. He eventually saves the day, accepts who he is, and is happy being Captain Comet and continues to fight another day. It would be written by Brad Bird and directed by Joe Johnston. Next up is Adam. While Adam did receive attention with the Arrowverse portrayal, I'd still want there to be an origin story more like his comic book origins. It would follow Ray experimenting with white dwarf star he found in a meteorite. It involves him experimenting with it and only when an emergency situation calls for it, he shrinks himself down and the only reason he can is because of his metagene. Anything else would blow up. So it's because of this he starts to fight crime and the first villain he fights is David Clinton, aka Kronos. Initially he was a petty thief who had a lack of timing. So he gets caught by the authorities before the events of the film, and studies rhythm and precise timing and becomes a costume villain through this shtick. Very early on in the movie, Adam has a bit of a fight with him and eventually he is caught again. However, it then cuts to a couple years later with the Adam as a fully fledged hero. However, because of strange things happening in his memories, he realizes that the time stream is becoming out of whack and that Kronos is behind it, and he has to stop him before he breaks down the space-time continuum. I thought that this would be an interesting idea for an Adam movie, as well as a wink and a nod to his time travel shenanigans on Legends of Tomorrow. Hawkman would also be making a cameo since they're good friends in the comics. It would be written and directed by Andrew Stanton. Next is Batman 3. With this film, I wanted redemption for a character that deserved so much better, and that is Mr. Freeze. He more than deserves his fair share after WBN Goldsman fucked him over in Batman and Robin. It would involve Batman confronting Mr. Freeze and the idea of him being a tragic villain and not wanting to do the things he has to in order to save his wife, as well as Batman furthering him down a path of villainy and him being consumed by it to the point of enjoyment. Mr. Freeze also tries to get help from an old friend, Dr. Kurt Langstrom, who eventually becomes Man-Bat after one of the failed cures for Nora Freeze. Same themes would be confronted with Langstrom, but it's more of a Jekyll and Hyde situation. It would be written and directed by Bong Joon-ho. Now we get to the miniseries, with that being Animal Man. Definitely a stranger one, but one that could very much work. A 10 episode miniseries that would adapt his origin as well as many aspects of Grant Morrison's run on the character. The first episode would feature his origin, which involved him hunting in the woods and finding a crashed spaceship, 
which exploded and gave him his powers. The second and third episodes would involve his work as a stuntman while slowly opening up to the idea of being a hero with the rest of the series following him becoming Animal Man, meeting his wife and having his two children. It wouldn't be an adaptation of Morrison's run, as that would be too long for a miniseries, but it would include many aspects from that run, many themes, the idea of Baker being an everyman, inc and include his vegetarianism and him being an animal rights activist, which started with Morrison. The showrunner would be Noah Hawley. Next film is Wonder Woman 3. The final film deals with Wonder Woman's most fatal foe outside of Ares, Cersei. After the more realistic and modern approach to the last film, I wanted to go full mystical with this film. Cersei tries to send the world back into the days of magic by conquering the world after she becomes bored and fed up with humanity, as well as Wonder Woman defeating her time and time again. Through this, the character of Donna Troy is introduced who becomes Wonder Girl at the start of the third act. She is connected to Cersei as she kidnapped Troy as a child and tried to breed her into an evil acolyte, thinking she was Diana. At the start of the film, she is Dark Angel and fights for Cersei, but once she sees her for what she truly is, she sides with Diana and she becomes her partner slash sidekick. Patty Jenkins will return to direct and co-write along with Alan Heinberg. Next up is Superman 2. The Mysterious Mr. Mixia Spitlick. This will be a very different Superman film as it would be more so about Mixie and his game rather than Superman himself. Mixie would still be his funny and amusing self, but he would also be a lot darker and more sinister at certain points. It would bring in some stranger and more surreal elements and even horror elements as well. It would be even psychological at points. It's because of this that Superman goes through some darker arcs and moments throughout the film. Nothing super incredibly dark, but brings up some insecurities about who he is and what he's doing, his morals, and that sort of thing. It would be written by C. Robert Cargill and directed by Scott Derrickson because of these various elements. Next up is Shazam 3. There isn't a lot to say about this one because it's very simple. The Marvel family now has to fight Black Adam. Due to the fact that I cut the Black Adam movie from the DCEU, elements from that would be present in this movie like it could feature flashbacks and backstory to Black Adam before he fights the Marvel family. Maybe even have him be the protagonist for the first half or so of the movie, and then bring in the family. Sure, you could do a Black Adam movie, but I feel like it would be too much backstory. I'm not saying it wouldn't make for an interesting movie. It would, but what would be left for the actual movie? Just a two-hour fight between them? I don't think that would be interesting. So I would combine those elements into one movie but not have it be too overstuffed. I think that would be more interesting. Sandberg and Gaiden would return to direct and co-write. Now we get to the next TV series, The Golden Age. No, this isn't going to be an adaptation of the miniseries of the same name, but I thought that the title would be applicable here. Mainly because this isn't just a show based around the Justice Society, but this is a show based around the entire Golden Age, which, in this universe, goes from 1935 to 1946. This show would run for three seasons. The first season would be focused on the Justice Society, the second season would be focused on the street level heroes, and the third and final season would be split in two, the first half focusing on the JSA, and the second focusing on the street level heroes. It could adapt bigger stories, but for the most part, even for the JSA, I would want it to stay as grounded as possible. Mainly because I would want a major separation in terms of the Golden Age and the Modern Age, where the latter is more fantastical and epic. The showrunners would be Drew Goddard and Stephen S. DeKnight. Next film is Doom Patrol. In this film, the Doom Patrol consists of the original roster, Dr. Niles Calder, Elastigirl, Robot Man, and Negative Man, as well as Fast Forward, Fever, and Joshua Clay as added members. I wouldn't want this to mimic Grant Morrison's run since the TV show is already doing that, so I would take elements from the original Silver Age team with elements from the Kupperberg run as well as Pollock's run. It would have that Silver Age sheen to it, but if you look under the surface, it's a bit more of a darker edge underneath. The villain would be General Amortis. It would be directed by Andy Muschietti and written by Gary Doberman. Next is The Flash 3. So this time around for The Flash, the villain would be the Trickster, the James Jesse version specifically. And this would be a very balanced film in terms of tone. It would have very dark and more dramatic moments, but on the flip side, very silly and weird moments regarding the trickster. It would also involve Barry trying to train Wally in all of this as well, as well as Barry wanting to ask Iris to marry him. The trickster eventually finds out who Barry is and starts playing tricks on him and trying to ruin his life, while also trying to create the greatest trick of all, 
make Central City disappear. It would be fun and dark all at the same time. I think someone perfect to write and direct would be Shane Black. Yes, it's very ironic, but I think it'll work. Next is Martian Manhunter 3. Here's an interesting one. This involves the other rather big villain that John Jones faces a lot, the White Martians. More specifically, the Hyper Clan. I've avoided I've avoided using the Hyper Clan because I thought it would be too similar to General Zod and Company, but I think you do the thing and you do it right and you don't fuck it up, it works. It just works. Yeah, that. I wouldn't want to have as many members as it is since they would be a Martian Manhunter villain and not a JLA villain. Also with this, I wanted to add a couple things. The leader isn't just a regular old white Martian. I'm going to make him Brett. If you don't know who he is, he showed up in like one pre-crisis comic and is one of the few instances of a yellow-skinned Martian, as well as making one of the members be a brainwashed McGann Moores. Also thrown into the mix is evil government agent Rio Ferdinand who reveals that the HyperClan were escapees of Cadmus who found the HyperClan and used them as experiments. Small time villain Libra would be shown briefly and would signify the HyperClan's first appearance capturing a villain. The film would be written and directed by James Mangold once again. Next TV series is Frankenstein and the Creature Commandos. So this wouldn't be an adaptation of any specific time and team, but it would use elements from all three eras to create an action horror show similar to the film Overlord. It would involve Frankenstein, the Bride of Frankenstein, Dr. Medusa, the Bogman, Vincent Velcoro, a vampire, Warren Griffith, a werewolf, and Callus, a mummy, fighting supernatural threats all across the world. The show would be gory and action-filled, but suspenseful and creepy as well. It would tackle something like Nazi zombies, but also creepier threats, like an army of ghosts or something along those lines. It would get all sides of horror and not just one specifically. The showrunners would be Mike Flanagan and Trevor Macy. Next is Aquaman 3. Due to the fact that Ocean Master and Black Manta are Aquaman's two most notorious foes, finding another villain was a bit tougher but I think I found a rather interesting one in the form of The Thirst. He's pretty much the golem who knows necromancy, which sounds really awesome, as well as the fact that this is something rather different. The Ocean Master is tied to Atlantis and is a relative of the hero. Black Manta is tied a bit more to reality and is connected to the hero through vengeance. The Thirst is more out there, more mystical, and has little relation to the hero. While that could be a bad thing as there's no personal connection there, I think it could work and possibly bring out something else in Aquaman. He has no personal connection that could bring up certain morale issues that he no longer has, which is just a thought. But I also thought it would make sense to bring in Garth, since he's efficient in mystical arts. While it could be seen as tiresome bringing in yet another psychic since it has been done with the last few movies, and with what you could probably see what I'm doing for the next phase, I think it could be done in a way here that would be different. For the past few times I've introduced a psychic, it's been done at the end of the movie or in the third act. But for here, as well as in The Flash 2 and 3 previously, he's going to be introduced at the beginning and show the buildup of the bond between the two of them. While that's, again, been done before in other movies, in this universe it would be seen as a bit more different. Will Beale and James Wan would return to write and direct respectively, as well as David Leslie Johnson McGoldrick co-writing. Now we finally have Justice League 4. So, so here we are at the fourth Justice League film, and I said earlier that this is where the League fights Steppenwolf, and I wasn't lying. They are going to be fighting Steppenwolf in this film, and it will be nothing like the Justice League film we got, nor the Snyder Cut. It'll be darker in tone, but it won't be, you know, a Zack Snyder film. The way I would want to do it is have Steppenwolf not have an onslaught or an army at first. He wants to scout things out first, and then have the right amount of minions to take over Earth in search of the anti-life equation. So the movie slash invasion would start out very subtly, and then the real invasion of Earth would begin. You could have the original six fight Steppenwolf and be decimated easily. Then Steppenwolf would, would think that he wouldn't need such a big army to stop them, which would lead to his demise, as they get more people to help them with the second invasion along with the added members of the League, the movie would be written and directed by Christopher McQuarrie. Then the final project of Phase 4 
is the television series Tracy 13. This is definitely a more obscure character, but I think it could be at least somewhat interesting for certain audiences. And by certain audiences, I mean young adults and teenagers, as that is the age of the character. Something I don't really like about the Arrowverse is that they take adult heroes and make them relatable to teenagers. That doesn't really make a ton of sense to me, especially when these grown adults act like children. It's not relatable, it's just not sensical. It would be more interesting and make more sense to actually have a teenager slash young adult to portray the main character, hence why I chose Tracy 13. It is simply too perfect for a CW show. It's got the edginess as well, the lack of a superhero edge to it, as well as being a pretty grounded show with, without a lot of effects. So the show is about a homo magi, the same subspecies as Zatara and Zatanna, Tracy 13 who is forbidden by her father to practice magic since her mother died of magical influence. So she decides to run away from home and start practicing sorcery while also living a life in the suicide slums of Metropolis as a teenager. She kind of becomes a mystical Jessica Jones of sorts if I had to compare it to anything. Also, Zatanna would make a couple of appearances. The showrunner would be Jonathan Entwistle. So that is phase four. Next video will be phase four casting.